Welcome back. Asthma is one of the most common chronic conditions in the country, and it certainly affects a lot of Kentuckians and a lot of Kentucky kids. Today, we're pleased to welcome Dr. Patricia Burkhardt, Associate Dean for the Undergraduate Nursing Program at UK, with some advice on managing asthma in children and especially recognizing when things are a problem. This is such a huge problem in our state, we know, and you have some important advice for families on recognizing when a child is having a problem with asthma. I do. I know many of your viewers out there probably have children children in their home that have asthma because about 10 million children have asthma. That's about 14 percent. And Kentucky ranks actually high than the higher than the national average. Um, we know that this is allergy season now, so parents always wonder, you know, is their child's asthma under good control? Because the symptoms of asthma are cough, wheeze, shortness of breath, and chest tightness. And I brought a model to show what happens with an asthma attack. And as you can see in this airway, as if it were the bronchial tree, this airway is nice and open. But when inflammation occurs during an asthma attack, the muscles around the air tubes tighten up, uh, the inside of the airway becomes inflamed and clogged with mucus. So I wanted parents to know about a tool that can help them to know how their child child's asthma is doing. And you brought some examples of some of the easy ways that parents can really get an idea of how their child's breathing is. I did, and I recommend that uh, parents ask the health care provider about a peak flow meter, and these are some examples. This is one, and here's a second one. And it's a very simple handheld device that the child blows into, and this moving indicator will let them know how fast they're blowing air from their airways. And it can let people know hours or even days before an asthma attack occurs so that the, the parent or the child can intervene early to avoid a major attack from occurring. So these are two examples of peak flow meters. And once we establish what the, the child's personal best is or the number that they're a, the highest number they're able to achieve, then we can create what we call uh, an asthma action plan. And it's very simple. It, the number falls into the green zone, which says the child's asthma is under good control. It falls into the yellow zone, which means there is treatment needed. And a lot of parents will recognize this inhaler that kids use to open up their air tubes. And of course, the red zone, that's the danger zone um, where emergency treatment is needed. And the health care provider can help put together the child's own asthma action plan that can be on file at school and can help the parent at home to know exactly what to do if this peak flow number falls into the yellow or the red zone. And very important information too, certainly, as many kids head away to camps and summer activities and that kind of thing to make sure that, that they can keep an eye on things themselves too. Sure, great idea. If kids are going for a sleepover or to camp, they take their action plan with them, have their peak flow meter and their inhaler, and if they blow into their peak flow meter each morning, if they start to see their numbers drop, it's telling them that their airways are beginning to constrict. Right. And then if they intervene early, they may not have a severe asthma attack. It can prevent it from happening. Well, wonderful information. Um, of course, as you mentioned, we know one that affects a lot of our viewers. So we thank you for taking the time to share that with us today. Great to be here. At, have your, uh, the viewers should ask their health care provider to teach them how to use a peak flow meter. And many of the health insurance policies cover cover. It's at less than $30. Wow. And could be an important tool. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll be right back with a check of your forecast for Mary.